Welcome to Climbing Together, the small business experience. I'm Beth Houtrow, founder of Climb the Small Business Book Club. In every episode, I talk to a small business owner about a mistake that they've made and what they learned from the experience. Mistakes are inevitable, perfection's impossible, so let's embrace the mistake. And today I'm so excited to welcome Katie Harvey to the podcast. Katie, tell us a little bit about you and your business. Absolutely. So I am a non-diet dietitian and an intuitive eating coach. And I've been in private practice since about 2011. And then I also started dabbling in online business around 2017. And I really went more, not completely all in on the online side of things, because I still have my private practice, but I do a lot more of that in the past like three years. And so in addition to my private practice, I also do online courses and I have a podcast of my own. So I feel like I, I do a little bit of several things within my business. Very cool. And that's the second time I've heard about non-diet dietitians um, in the last couple of weeks. So that's Ooh, very, very cool. cool. What does that exactly mean? It means basically that we recognize that dieting doesn't work. And so we take more of an approach of like, how do you take care of your body and take care of your health without dieting and without focusing on weight loss being the only goal? Very cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I just, when you said it, I was like, oh, I've heard that recently. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right. So we are here to talk about mistakes. So talk to me about a mistake that you've made along the way as you were growing your business. Yeah. Looking back, one of the biggest mistakes I made is being afraid to do social media in general, but mainly videos on social media. So I resisted starting an Instagram account for forever. Like mainly I had Facebook and I have a Facebook group and I'm pretty comfortable there. Like I know how the platform works, but for a very long time, I resisted doing anything else. And when I finally got on Instagram, I took forever to actually start doing the reels because eventually it became that like the videos were the thing to do. And then mm -hmm. I resisted having a TikTok until about six months ago. And <laughs> looking back, I think I was afraid to do video because I was afraid to look dumb. Like I've never mm -hmm. been theatric. I hated being on stage growing up and I don't know anything about videography. And so right. <laughs> it just it seemed like that's not for me. And you know, I think there's also kind of an interesting element to it as well that in the industry I work, there's a lot of judgment about bodies and that's a lot of what I talk about. And so it also felt weird to me that I was insecure in my own way about being seen. And it wasn't necessarily about body shame. It was more about like looking silly and all of that. Right. But well, I kick myself because now that I've leaned into it and actually embraced video, I look at people who are farther ahead because they embraced it sooner than I did. And, and on one hand, I know that comparison is not helpful, but mm -hmm. I see that if I had started that sooner, I probably would have built my audience faster or um, have bigger followings or maybe more leads. And it it's like a, the cost of lost opportunity, you know? And so the thing I'm taking from that instead of like, beating myself up or being like, oh, it's not fair that like I didn't do this sooner. Instead of wallowing in that place, I'm really just trying to take it as a lesson that sometimes we have to embrace things that make us kind of uncomfortable, you know, and that sometimes you have to do things you don't necessarily want to do because it serves that broader purpose within your business. Right. And it really helps me to think of it that way. And it's totally changed the way I look at doing video. Yep. It's uh, Marie Forleo's um, Everything is Figure Outable. One of her quotes, hopefully I get this right, is it's better to start and be sucky than stay sucky. Right. And the idea yeah. is that you can't get better at something until you start trying to do it. And in the beginning, you probably will be a little bit silly and, and yeah. won't be that great, but there's no other way to get through it. Right. There's no other way to move forward. Right. You know, if a kid was like, I won't play soccer because I'm bad at it. And like, well, that's because you've never played it. Right. As adults, we understand yeah. for children that they need to get better. But for ourselves, it's really hard to embrace that, especially in a public setting like social media feels yeah. so public. Yeah. I think that's that's probably a big piece of it is that it feels so public and that and you tell yourself like everybody's watching me and no they're not. <laughs> <laughs> you hope they are. You but wish that's they the goal, would be. but <laughs> right? Yeah. 
Uh, I look back at my original. So I make videos about tips from business books. And I look back at those original videos and I'm like, oh, and then I have to be proud of myself for trying and starting. Um, But the progress that I've made, not just in the quality, but in the speed, right? My ability Uh to just set up the camera, get the lighting right and, and record what I need to record. It took me ages in the past and now it's so much faster and so much easier. So that's funny. Yeah, Yeah, it's true because in the beginning I would be, you know, starting over and re-recording a million times. And now a lot of the times I just kind of go, even if it's not even perfect, I'm like, eh, it's fine. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just one of those things you got to start. And I would say most people on some level need to do that, especially if you're a subject matter expert, you have to be willing to make those videos and and talk to people about what you know. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. And I love, you know, we talk a lot about, gosh, I think every self-help guru, whatever, talks about the the dangers of perfectionism and being worried about people judging you and that all those things will hold you back. And if you want to be an entrepreneur, you've got to be strong enough to let those things um, kind of roll off your your shoulders if you yeah, can. And yeah. And you kind of just have to be willing to try. And and I love that you brought up that that book from Marie Forleo because just like just the title of that book, I sometimes remind myself of that no matter yeah. how little I know about something, whether it's video or course platforms or whatever it might be, email <laughs> marketing, it's all figure outable. And totally. When you kind of embrace yeah. that, it's it's sort of empowering. Like, yeah, I can figure this out. You know, yep, it might totally. take me a while. I might need to hire a little bit of help or take a course on it, but I can figure this out. Well, and I love that you said take a course or hire help or talk to friends. We're reading this month, we're reading Who Not How, which is all about this idea that when you're trying to figure something out, the first thing you should do is figure out who might know the answer to it. Who can I lean on to like accelerate that learning process? And so everything is figure outable as Especially if you ha- if you're willing to ask other people, right, and get advice and all of those kind of things. That yeah. is a great point because yeah, we can kind of flounder through trying to DIY it with a lot mm-hmm. of things, pretty much anything, or we can accelerate our progress by like working with somebody who knows what they're doing. So yeah, yeah. completely nice. Well, we've talked about two books, and I know you have a book that you're going to share with us. So mm-hmm. talk to me about uh, a book that's meant something to you as you're growing your business. Yeah, one of the early business books that I read that has stuck with me is called Lynchpin. It's by Seth Godin. And he's one of my favorite business authors just in general. I've read a lot of his books. And Lynchpin, what stuck with me from that is the idea of making yourself like in, indispensable or memorable, mm-hmm. like being so valuable and, and giving people like serving them so well that they want to keep working with you. And Mm -hmm. I just think coming at your business with that attitude is really beautiful. And, you know, I carry that with me. And I also love, he talks a lot in his different books about the idea of just ship it, like do something and get it out there into the marketplace and stop letting the perfectionism and the procrastination and all of that hold you back. Like sometimes you just need to put it out there and see how the market responds and then adjust accordingly. And so that helps me too, is just to remember like, keep like forward motion. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the interesting thing is people think they have to create something that's perfect to serve the customer well, but the perfection that you're creating is only your own idea of perfection. You don't actually know what the customers want. So the only way to really serve them well is to put things out and discover what they want and and then make more of that. Yeah. Right. Get that feedback. If you're just in your own little bubble, like, Oh, it has to be perfect. Or I don't, I'll disappoint my customers. Well, you don't have any idea because who knows at the end of the day, it's it's pretty tricky, especially when you're first starting to understand what your customers want. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, so on my list, I've I've created quite a list lately of books I have to read, so I need to <laughs> buckle down. Add it to the list, I um, know. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I we were talked about I've read Seth Godin's um This is Marketing, which has been huge in my coaching business. And so I'll have to read Lynchpin. I know he has great stuff. Okay, so Climb the Small Business Book Club is our sponsor for this podcast. And we just talked about continual learning, talking about books, but our other tenant is about community and entrepreneur community. So talk to me about how you've built your entrepreneur community and and what it means to you. I really do think it's everything because entrepreneurship can be so lonely and you don't know what you don't know. And 
I've got kind of like different pockets of community. So for my private practice, a lot of that community is more people who are local and doing like work in the same field as I do. And I have been part of a group practice for the, the past like 12 years. And so those those people were very much my community in how to grow a private practice and how to mm -hmm. serve clients well, but also like run the business side of it. But then the more I've grown in the online space, more of my community has become virtual and spaces, you know, whether it be Facebook groups or I'm a member of a couple of membership programs. And that's been a great place for community because you get people with so many different perspectives and expertise. And I've even formed, um, like we call ourselves an accountability pod of um, mm -hmm. a handful of other women that we meet every other week just to talk about what are we working on in our businesses and what what feedback or support might we need from each other. And I don't know what I would do without those pieces of support because <laughs> I would just be, yeah. you know, out there kind of floundering on my own. Totally. And it's I love that accountability group. Um, I have a lot of clients who are first starting out and they're always like, I don't want to have a boss. I want to do everything on my own. That's the reason I want to be an entrepreneur. And I'm like, so when your motivation is low, which is inevitable, right? At some point in life, the way you're feeling or whatever that is, before you had a boss who helped keep you motivated. Now you have to motivate yourself or find other ways to build uh, motivation around you. And so I love that accountability group because not only does it motivate you when you're tired to keep going, but also to work on the things you know are most important that maybe you're avoiding. That's what I do with my accountability partners is, is I talk to them about the thing I don't want to do the most that needs to be done so badly so they can push me to get that done. Because it's not just yeah. about working. I could work plenty. It's about working on the things I, on I don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to have people who you trust to like tell you hard things or to challenge you mm -hmm. in a way where you can actually hear it. I think that's really helpful too is, um, it's hard to know whose opinion to trust because there's a million of them out mm -hmm. there. And so building relationships with people who, who you do trust and value their opinion, I think allows you to go deeper in how you think about your business. Absolutely. Yeah. I love, I love all of that. And I'm so glad that you've built that community and you're sharing it with our, our group. Cause I, like you said, it can be so lonely. I think so many entrepreneurs uh, try to do it alone, especially people like your online business, people who are um, sitting at home, working from home, right? They don't necessarily, they've watched some training class on YouTube or whatever that is, and they've decided they're going to run their business. And they seem, they forget that there's this whole world out there of other people doing similar work who can help support and move them forward. So yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Nice. Well, Katie, that's our podcast for today. Thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, I love it. And I love how these are just like kind of short and sweet conversations, but it's like just these little um, like nuggets of wisdom that, that you share. I love your podcast. It's awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, I want it to be something people can digest and take forward in their business. So I really appreciate totally. that. Yeah. This podcast is brought to you by Climb the Small Business Book Club, where entrepreneurs go to learn, discuss, apply, and grow. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to subscribe at Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcasts, or follow us on Instagram at Climb Book Club. And always remember, mistakes are inevitable, perfection's impossible. So let's embrace the mistake. <laughs>